Deputy President, the Honorable Rigathi Gashagwa, the House Leadership, our resource persons, my brother from another mother, the Governor of Mombasa, the young Sharif Nasir. That's what we call him. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Your Excellency, first allow me to register our collective appreciation to you for finding time to come to be with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, we talked before you came here. The last uh, we talked was, I think, last night. And uh, we do not take it for granted, your presence here. From your diary, clearly, you're constrained for time. But still, you told me that you'll purpose to be here, and today you're here. We feel greatly honored by your presence. Let me also appreciate our resource persons. Your Excellency, we have been here for about three days. This seminar is the post-election seminar, basically to equip senators, more particularly, the new incoming senators with the capacity required for them to discharge their mandate uh, as senators. And this is a seminar that uh, has run parallel to the one by the National Assembly. And uh, the common denominator of these two seminars are the resource persons. They have been uh, running up and down, changing venues, they will come and address the Senate. After they are done, they'll run across to go address the National Assembly. So we really appreciate our resource persons so that you may be able to know them. I will uh, mention them by name. And when I mention your name, kindly stand up so that uh, His Excellency, the Deputy President, can be able to see you. We were honored to have the presence of the uh, common, uh, of the Secretary General of the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, <laughs> Honorable Stephen Tweek. He is a former member of Parliament of the House of uh, Commons in the UK. He also served as a minister in the government of the United Kingdom. The other resource person we had was uh, Honorable Kevin Andrews. I think he's walked out a former member of parliament in the House of Representatives in, in Australia. He also served as a, a cabinet minister in different portfolios in, uh, in Australia. The third one is our lovely sister, Sylvia Lucas, from South Africa. She is the deputy chair of the National Council uh, of provinces in South Africa, very senior uh, person in that house, which is similarly to it's, it's similar to the Senate in South Africa. They don't call it the Senate; they call it the uh, National Council of Provinces. Then we have another lovely sister from Canada, Natalie Foster, a senior clerk in the House of Commons in Canada. I think she's uh, left to catch a flight back home. Uh, these are the people who have been with us, impacting very uh, valuable knowledge to our senators. And uh, we do appreciate the, uh, the great work that uh, you have done. Your Excellency, just to bring some um, relevance, why your presence and the need, even from here, going forward, why we may need uh, a structured working relationship with your office. Your Excellency, one of your responsibilities as the Deputy President is to coordinate the intergovernmental relationship between the national government and the county governments. In this country, you cannot talk of county governments without talking about the Senate. So this is your natural home by virtue of that responsibility that you have. And therefore, Your Excellency, welcome to the Senate, welcome to the Upper House. Your Excellency, just like the leader of majority said, 
the Senate is not the house of the elderly. It is the house of maturity. You will not, for example, see any senator with a placard out there. Because we know the better ways of handling issues. It doesn't mean that the Senate does not have issues. We do have issues. But we choose and deliberately elect to pursue better avenues and achieve the very same results. Your Excellency, courtesy of your responsibility, and that's why last week when we met in State House, I asked you if I could pay a courtesy call on you because I wanted us to discuss uh, how then do we structure a working relationship between your office and the Senate to better um, you know, carry forward the issues of devolution. The Senate is the protector of the county interests, and I believe there is a triangle that once we put it together, it can do magic. Your office, the Senate, and the COG. Once the three um, offices come up with a structured way of engagement, I believe quite a number of things will find solution. One, one example in point, Your Excellency, is um, you did some very fantastic job some few weeks ago when you summoned uh, uh, MCAs, wrangling MCAs. In the Senate, we have the devolution committee, which has been extremely busy visiting counties to talk to them, to talk to MCAs, to talk to governors. We are doing this because it is extremely painful to handle an impeachment motion uh, in the Senate. And to forestall many impeachment in this country and in the county assemblies, we have decided to empower the devolution committee, not just to wait until they receive impeachment motions, but to go handle issues before they get to the level where a governor gets impeached. And that is where we can draw your wisdom from the office. And uh, Your Excellency, in the few weeks coming, I'll still seek for uh, Katasiko so that we can engage and see how we can structure our engagement. Lastly, Your Excellency, in my Easter life, I was the governor of the neighboring county here, Kilifi County. And I used to serve as the chair of the legal committee in the COG. And one of the issues I used to push is the completion of the unbundling of the functions. We left COG with that still pending. Your Excellency, using your good office, it will be good if we complete this exercise. Ten years down the devolution journey, we cannot still be talking of not having completed the unbundling of the functions. And therefore, as we come to engage you, this is one of the issues that will be on our plate to see how we can be able to discuss it and find a solution to unbundling the functions. Now, once we unbundle, the magic about unbundling a function is because once you unbundle a function, you can be able to cost it. Today, the reason why the majority whip has given you many figures, from the executive, we're being given 380, from um, uh, CRA, we're being given another figure, from the Council of Governors, we're being given another figure. The reason why we have many figures is because one, we have not unbundled the functions, and two, we have not costed the functions. When we unbundle and cost the functions, the amount of money, the final figure becomes rather automatic. Because you need to ask yourself, if we unbundle the health function, for example, cost it, if the national government was the one to implement the health function, how much in this financial year would it incur? Then transfer that money to the county government. So we will not even be talking about we have met the constitutional threshold of the 15% because we will have gone function after function. So Your Excellency, these are the areas that we believe 
we can draw collaborations, partnership with your office to see to it that uh, we complete uh, this particular exercise.